Hi everybody, it's Sue here. Are you ready for our final week of our study of God's Word concerning our thought lives by using Pastor Louis Giglio's Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. We're going to look at the very last two chapters, chapters 9 and 10. This is going to be a short video because I'm just going to bring it right to the close of what this whole study is about and where it leads us out of Psalm 23, that he prepares, Jesus prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies, and that he himself is the one that sets the table, sits at the table, and there's only one other chair that he's added to his, and that's ours personally. Yes, we can invite the enemy through our thoughts and actions, but mostly through our thoughts, because that's where our actions start, right? Um, to become guests at our table, and it gets overcrowded. We wonder why life doesn't work and why we struggle and why, why our faith seems dim. You know what? We have been learning these past few weeks to empty the chairs of, that the enemy has put up, that we've allowed him to, and let it just be a table for two, Lord Jesus and me. And of course, my, one of my most favorite life ver at verse for me, actually, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone opens the door of their life to me, I will come into them and dine with them. That is the Lord Jesus speaking there, and he speaks to us even now that that's what he's calling us to. But I want to um, conclude our time together in chapters 9 and 10, reading a couple of quotes from the book and then getting into a scripture. Uh, lingering with the Almighty is the best defense against the enemy who's trying to get at your table. There is nothing that takes more, um, th that is worth more, that really should be the priority of our lives and not as a guilt trip priority. But what I have found for my own personal life, that when I linger with the Almighty, just like I wrote, everything in my life falls into place. When I ask Father to fill me with His Spirit, which is already in, who, who is already inside me, but when He, when I ask Him to overflow and overwhelm my life out of the last few verses of Luke 11, actually it's more towards the middle around verse 13, the Father pours in Himself through the Holy Spirit and fills us up. Can I tell you, it's in that place of lingering, of being positioned in God's presence, being with Him seated at the table is, is what allows and causes that fullness to arrive. So rise in us. So often in our, and I lived this way for decades, I had quiet times with the Lord, but did I linger? Did I wait to hear what He had to say to me that day? Each and every day, He had a fresh word for me and I missed it for years. Every day, He had a new scripture for me to read and, and to pour His oxygen of the Holy Spirit into me, feeding my spirit and healing my soul. Did I take the time, just a few more minutes, to just come into His presence and wait there? And Excuse me, I just choked. Then I want to read the final, um, very last sentence of the book to you. The Good Shepherd is sitting at your table. And this, is, this last sentence is going to tie it all up for us. It's what the whole book is about. The Good Shepherd is sitting at your table. Jesus has invited you to all the abundance he offers. It's a meal for the two of you. And he himself is the feast. That is the truth. That's the truth of God's word. It is what changed my life. It was, it's what set me free. Him being my uh, all in all and putting his presence in, lingering with him, waiting upon him, being filled with the spirit, just like I said, and hearing from his word to my heart, um, having him refresh my soul. That's what's life-changing, and that's what's life-giving. Can I say this is almost a matter of life and death? Are we going to, like in Romans, say, live our lives to just do what we want to do in our carnal nature, which only brings death in every form possible? Or are we going to live according to the Spirit, setting our heart on Him, asking for Him to fill us with the fruit of his spirit, cultivating the fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, and, and walking in the gifts, the charisma gifts that are freely given. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, words of knowledge, wisdom, healing, miracles, all those things. 
That's what he's called us to do, to live in a much higher plane than we often allow ourselves to do. I was really taken in my quiet time with Jesus this week, remembering a verse that is very near and dear to me. And I'm going to read it first to you. I'm going to end the video with this um, out of the New King James. and But then I'm going to read it in the Amplified. And the Amplified version, what it does is takes goes back to the original languages of the Greek and Hebrew, and the Greek of the New Testament, Hebrew of the Old. And of course, we're going to be reading out the Gospel of John, uh, so it'll be the Greek. But it'll be the many facets of the words that are given there in the original language. That's what the Amplified does. It kind of brings that amplification of the defini definition of the original languages. Let me read it first, though, in um, New King James. And of his, that's Jesus, get this, of his fullness, of his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. That's an abundance that we can understand. That's the abundance of John 10.10. 10. And again, how many years I lived so below all that he had for me, not feasting with him, not enjoying him as the feast himself, not enjoying his presence, but just that little turn in my life to linger there, to carve out time to linger, to be with him and to wait on him, to hear what he had to say or what he wanted to show me or speak to me through his word or um, the soft impression of the Holy Spirit upon my spirit. Let me finish with this uh, amplified of the same verse. For out of his fullness, out of his abundance, we have all received all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. That's what God has for us. You know, and I don't think he minds us being selfish when we ask him for more of himself. I sometimes think I'm the most selfish woman in the world, but Jesus, I just want more of you and I want all that you have. Whatever you need to do in my life so that I can be filled with your fullness, have at me because your way is the only way. And dear friend, as you're listening today, I pray that's your prayer too. God bless you and thank you for doing this study with me. We'll see you again or start up again May 9th. God bless.